As a Christian man, you probably already know that a man's supposed to pursue the woman. But sadly, that's the extent of what most Christian men are taught about this whole idea of being in a relationship, that it's their job to pursue. But how to pursue, when to pursue, what methods to use and what not to use, these types of questions are rarely answered in the Christian community. So to answer this, we want to look at what the Bible says. The problem with that is that there's not a lot of direct scriptures about pursuing a woman. However, there are a lot of relevant principles that we can apply to this question about how to pursue a woman as a strong, godly man. So in this video, we're going to talk about seven principles that can help you pursue a woman biblically. Number one, get right with God and yourself before pursuing the woman. At the end of Jesus's Sermon on the Mount, he said, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Any man can pursue a woman. You can go on YouTube right now, type in how to pursue a woman and you're gonna get a thousand videos from a thousand different worldly guys telling a bunch of other worldly guys on what to do. But I'm not talking to worldly guys. I'm talking to godly men. At least that's my hope. That's what I'm making this video for. A man who actually wants to glorify God and pursue a woman. So it's not enough just to know how to pursue a woman. You need to be ready to manage that relationship and serve that woman once you do actually pursue her. God loves when his sons pursue women in glorifying ways to God. God's the one who made relationships. A lot of times I think we kind of like see the relationships in this worldly category and God over here in this holy sacred category, but we need to remember that God's the one who designed all of this in the first place. I say all that because things work best when we use them as they were designed to be used. If you use your car to tow and you take your truck to the racetrack, those aren't gonna work very well because yeah, you could do it, but that's not what they're designed for. Tow with the truck, that's gonna go well. Use a sports car and you go to the racetrack, you're gonna do a lot better. Likewise, if you wanna succeed in relationships, you have to go back to the original design and know the designer. When your heart's not right with God and you end up with a woman, it's a disaster. One of the worst things that you could go through, one of the worst things that could happen to you is for you to not be right with God and to you and for you not to know who you are personally and your pursuits actually work and you get into a relationship with a woman. As Proverbs 20 verse 21 states, an inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. So how can you get right with God? It starts with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian, meaning you haven't put your faith in Jesus, asked him to forgive you of your sins as you confess them, as you repent and lean on God's grace alone for salvation. If you're not a true Christian, the path to becoming a true man is by first becoming a true Christian. You have to be made right with God to have that relationship with him restored. But it's not enough just to be a Christian. Now you have to be a sanctified Christian on the path of maturity with God. As you walk in the newness of life that God has granted you and you get right with him, your life becomes in order internally. You start knowing who you are as God's son and only then are you ready to actually pursue a woman. Number two, put your physical life in order as well. So point one was about the spiritual, the internal, but it's very important, not as important as the spiritual, but definitely very important that you put your 
physical world around you, meaning yourself and the external things that are a part of your kingdom as a man, it's important to put those things in order. Now, I've never met a man who's so ugly that there's no woman in the world that will ever give him a chance or date him or marry him. It's not going to happen where it's just incompatible. There's some woman out there on the same level that likes you and you like her. So that's not what I'm saying as far as physical health. What I am saying, however, is that you make finding a woman much harder for yourself if you're unhealthy. Now, I, I, we're all different, right? Some of us run a little bit heavier, run a little bit shorter, taller. You know, those things are out of our control, our hair color, our facial features, all that type of stuff. But when we focus on our health, that is attractive because that's something that's in our control. You can be healthier or unhealthier based upon exercise and how you're eating. And those are directly linked to your actions. So big picture, we can't control all of our physical attractiveness to women, but the things that are in your control, you need to be taken care of because just as you want to be with a beautiful woman, a woman's looking at your physical appearance and that's some sort of expression about who you are. If you're not taking care of yourself, that says something about you. Now let's move out to the external things like a car. Okay, we don't want to go after those women who just want a guy with a flashy car. A good godly woman isn't going to ultimately care, oh, you drive this expensive $50,000, $100,000 car versus, oh, you bought this used car for $10,000. On the other hand though, what a woman is going to care about, a godly woman who's right with God and has a good view of material possessions to see them as a blessing from God and, and who's not a lover of money, but who has a healthy view of that type of stuff, She's not going to ultimately care if you have a nice car or a bad car. She's gonna care more about how you treat it. A older car that's clean and maintained inside is more attractive to a woman than a really nice car and it's a disaster inside and it shows that you're a slob and you're not keeping up on it. It's always breaking down because you're not keeping up on the maintenance and things like that. Versus if you're stewarding that car well, and she can sense that just by the how ordered it is and that you're taking care of it, that's going to matter more. The same thing is true of your, your house, the place that you live. She shouldn't care ultimately if you're a younger guy or wherever you're at in life and you're, you know, your physical residence where you live, that's not as important to her as what you're doing with it. Are there pizza boxes all over the place? lawn, dirty laundry everywhere. And your, you know, the prized possession of your home is your video game console that you clearly spend 10 hours a day on. That's not attractive to a woman because those are saying things about your character that might never change versus the house that you live in. She knows, okay, we get married. We work hard together. We can improve this part of our life together. That shouldn't be a huge concern. But this other stuff, if you're not like managing what you have well, that's a red flag to her because it's like, e, that might not change. This just might be who he is. Now don't go too far with this. A lot of guys take these words I'm saying and then they go a hundred miles past the point that I'm trying to make. I'm not saying you have to have everything in order, be the perfect spiritual man, be the perfect physical man by worldly standards, have the nice car, nice house, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying all of that. What I am saying is that you need to be the type of man who's making strides ahead, moving forward, showing her your character through the way that you manage the physical world that God has given you to be a steward of. Proverbs 19 verse two, desire without knowledge is not good and whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. The point here, get your physical world in order before just being zealous for a woman. Number three, choose the right type of woman to pursue. Before you pursue a specific individual woman, what you really wanna do is first define the type of woman that God wants you to pursue. Again, I'm talking to Christian men here, so our goal isn't just to be with a woman, rather our goal is to glorify God through our relationship with a woman. Her appearance, her charm, her receptivity towards your pursuit 
are secondary issues. And I'm not saying those are unimportant things. I'm just not, I'm just saying they're not as important and they shouldn't be the first checkboxes that you go through because if a woman isn't walking with the Lord, either she's not a Christian or she's not mature enough as a Christian, don't even consider all the other variables because you're just going to get into something that you shouldn't have been in in the first place. Proverbs 31 verse 30 states, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Number four, change your definition of success when it comes to pursuing a woman. So a lot of guys feel like it's a failure if they pursue a woman and she rejects them. This is a big mistake. Your desire and goal for pursuing a woman shouldn't be just to win that woman at any cost. Rather, your main goal should be to figure out what the will of the Lord is through the pursuing process. You really wanna take on the heart and posture of Jesus where he says, not my will, but your will be done to his heavenly father. So if you pursue a woman and she rejects you, in a way that's actually a success because now you know for certain this is not a woman God wants you to be with. Of course, you can try again or maybe her feelings change, but generally speaking, you get the point here. When we do something, it causes other things to happen in the world and that gives us insight on what we should do next. So as you pursue a woman, the way that she responds, the things that you learn about her, the way that you're responding as you get to know her. These are all insights that will help you know what God's will is for you. Because if you just sit there and wait to know God's plan, and then you're only gonna pursue once you feel like you've figured it all out and you know how it's all gonna end, you're never going to actually pursue because that's not gonna happen. And you're never gonna know anything for real because it's all gonna be in your head and when you pursue a woman, you can validate some of the things maybe you sense or invalidate some of those things that you sense. But until you actually go out there and do it, all of it is just your opinion and your thoughts. Likewise, when you change your goal and change your motive for why you're pursuing, it frees you to pursue more often and to not be so sensitive about rejection because now you're, instead of seeing her as the report card for your manhood, oh, if she rejects me, it means I must not be worthy. If, if she says no, that must mean I'm, I'm, I did it wrong. So you wanna see it as clarity, what does God want me to do? That frees you to go after the woman that you're interested in because now there's less pressure on it. And a side bonus to this mentality is that it gives you more confidence and women like more confident men. I mean, that's just the fact. You don't want to be have a false confidence or a, you know, a worldly bravado, but when you're insecure, it it makes her uneasy. But when you're secure and you have a healthy confidence and you're not going to her to shape your world and you're going to be a fragile million broken into a million pieces if she rejects you, and she knows you have a strength and you're going to be okay if you if she she rejects you that actually increases the chances of her giving you a chance number five measure twice cut once god has commanded us very specific things that are really clear like avoid sexual temptation flee from that don't get into any obvious and try to glorify god so there's clearly things in the bible that are blatant sins and we're commanded don't sin and do what you can to avoid sin. There's nowhere in the Bible that commands us to never make a mistake. A mistake and a sin are two very different things. A sin is when you're defying God, you're breaking his law. A mistake is when you just don't do something that's morally neutral in the most efficient, best way possible. So it's not a sin if you pursue a woman and you thought God said, yeah, that's that's the one for you or something like that. And she's like, no, I don't like you. And it's not gonna change. That's not a sin. That's a mistake. You misheard God because God didn't say that. If you, you know, go after her and you just 
fumble over your words and you seem nervous and it doesn't work out and she's like, uh, you know, you're making me nervous too, so I don't really want to be around you and all that stuff, that's not a sin. That's a mistake. And that just helps you grow and learn and it's not the end of the world. So as a man, you have to just accept your imperfections. You're not a perfect man in all ways, whatever that even means, because you know, what does that even mean? We're all just different, right? The way I would pursue my wife is different than the way you're gonna pursue your wife, which is something I'll talk about in a minute. So don't think about mistakes. Think about sins. Think about the things that are very clear in scripture that it is a failure if you don't do them. And the way, one way to do that is by using that, that idea of measure twice, cut once. In other words, be patient, be thoughtful, be wise, slow down, don't let your feelings dictate all of the facts, meaning don't let your feelings shape the interpretation of the facts that you wish were actually there but aren't. Rather, let the facts of life shape your feelings and be objective rather than constantly subjective. And when you can measure twice, cut once, the spirit behind that principle in relationships, usually you're gonna do a lot better. You know, we're all gonna still make mistakes, we're all still going to sin because none of us are perfect, but do what you can to be wise about this process. As Proverbs 19 verse three says, people ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then are angry at the Lord. Number six, pursue her in a masculine way that is true of your personality. So maybe you clicked on this video hoping that I gave you this like structured Excel sheet of strategic things you should do in order and this will unlock the woman's heart I'm not gonna do that because that would be unbiblical. Because if God wanted a man to pursue a woman in the exact same way as every other man, he would have made that very clear in the Bible. The Bible gives us what we need. If it's not in there, we didn't need it. So you wanna take biblical principles, I'm not saying just ignore scripture on this topic, you wanna take what is there and then apply it in a healthy, wise way. And I believe the main reason God didn't give men a specific blueprint on how to pursue a woman is because he wants men to be the individuals that they are. You should be masculine. You should be a man because that's true of us if you're a man. But we're all different and we're the way we express our masculinity should be expressed differently. So in my opinion, in my explanation of scripture on this topic, telling a man how to pursue a woman exactly would be like telling an artist how to exactly paint the picture. I may be able to request a certain type of picture from an artist, paint me a tree, right? But, uh, but it's pointless for me to tell the artist exactly what to do because that minimizes the point of going to that artist. I like the way that artist paints. So I wanna see that, that, that thought, that image come out of that man's brain and go onto the canvas. Likewise, God's gonna tell you what to do, but he made you as a man to express your masculinity in a way that's true of you. Now, going back to the painting analogy, some people might not like that tree. It might not be their style of art. And I might say, wow, I really like that tree. That's, that's awesome. And likewise, some women aren't going to like the way that you pursue them. They're not going to all click with your expression of masculinity, and some women will. So it's not about unlocking this formula, it's about accurately expressing yourself in a true way that's biblically masculine. And big picture, it's less important of how you pursue a woman, as long as it's biblical and you're not breaking any commands, it's more important that you do it. Actually do it, pursue her, figure it out as a man. As you walk with God and you're living out of that new nature and you're expressing your masculinity, you're gonna figure it out. You're gonna know what to do because you're a man and God's given you that ability. And number seven, serve her and look for a woman 
who wants to serve you too. The primary difference between a worldly relationship and a godly relationship is where the source of joy is coming from and where you're seeking out your joy. The world says you should get into a relationship to find happiness in that person and so that person can make you happy. A biblical relationship, however, does have some of that. You should enjoy that person. It's, it's nice when they serve you or do things like that. It's important. But ultimately, the main joy in a Christian relationship is serving each other, serving the woman that God has planned for you to serve. Again, it needs to be mutual because then if it's not, it's you're getting taken advantage of, it's dysfunction, she turns in, she's, she's entitled, and you don't want that. But as Jesus said in Acts 20 verse 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so the joy of a good godly relationship is found when two people, a man and a woman, both have this mentality and they're going into this ready to die for the other person, especially if you know they're married and they're leading, going towards marriage and they have that sacrificial mindset as explained in Ephesians 5. When you can go with that mindset, that's what God wants for a relationship. If you're a Christian man, particularly a Christian single man who wants biblical relationship advice, make sure you subscribe to this new channel so you and I can stay in touch and grow together as men. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com. Until next time, God bless.